Hello, my name is Matt and this is Pixel Burn where I take a look at some of the more interesting things that happened in gaming news this week, now that I am no longer obliged to cover the launches of new consoles. Hidetaka Swery Hero, best known as Swery 65, confirmed in an interview with Gaming Bolt this week that he has been working on a sequel for Deadly Premonition, possibly the greatest unofficial Twin Peaks game ever made. Swery is still currently working on D4 at the moment, an episodic murder mystery for the Xbox One about fighting pimps on a plane while strange women sniff you. At least that's what I think it's about, going by the trailer. According to the interview, he's been working on D4 for the last two or three years, and it was during that time he also did some work on Deadly Premonition 2, as well as another game called Lords of Arcana. Now, before you get overexcited like I did, working on a game doesn't necessarily mean it's a done deal. It's a broad term and could mean just about anything. For example, I could draw a picture in MS Paint of a robot that dispenses cocktails and oral sex and say I'm working on one. That doesn't mean you'll see it in stores by Christmas. Swery's work on a possible Deadly Premonition 2 could have just been him sitting in his underpants all day scoffing ice cream and watching Fire Walk With Me. Yet this isn't the first time Swery has referred to a possible Deadly Premonition sequel though, and if someone gave him the opportunity to make it, I'm sure he'd jump at the chance. Naturally, however, that'll depend on how well D4 does, so I hope it turns out fantastic and sells bucket loads. Don't you agree, Zack? Of course, if we don't get a Deadly Premonition sequel, you could always make your own in Game Maker Studio, currently available for free for an unspecified period of time. It could be forever or it could be over by the time you watch this video, in which case, sorry. If the offer's still running by the time you watch this, however, then all you have to do is download the Game Maker Studio free version installer, then run it and let the auto-update do its thing. Once that's done, load up the installer again and you'll have the option to register for a free license key for the standard edition, which usually retails at about 50 American dollars. So if you've always wanted to get started making little games and Unity 3D scared you away, give Game Maker a try. Your first efforts will most probably be complete and utter garbage, but keep at it and you too could one day make the next Spelunky, Hotline Miami or Gunpoint. No, no, I'm actually being serious there. Believe it or not, all three of those games were made in Game Maker. In fact, Spelunky's creator Derek Yu wrote a really handy guide to Game Maker back in 2008 that's still mostly applicable now. If you do decide to give it a try, then I also recommend you pick up a copy of Anna Anthropy's Rise of the Video Games Zinsters. Tells you how anyone, not just programmers, can and should make games, and is a great source of motivation for aspiring game creators. Speaking of cool little games, tremble mortals in despair! The Steam Autumn Sale is upon us. It will linger until December the 3rd. If you don't want to hemorrhage money the way an Ebola victim leaks blood, then for God's sake, lock your bloody credit cards away. There's a bunch of daily deals, but the real cash siphons are the flash sales every 8 hours, complete with a ticking timer that whispers, buy me, buy me, with every diminishing second. Resist! Resist! Your wallet demands that you resist, unless the game is 75% or more off, because that's a really, really good deal. You know what isn't a good deal though? Paying $50 for a review. That being the price, Indie Game Magazine are now asking from indie developers in exchange for reviewing their games, as part of a new editorial and reviews policy instituted by owner Chris Newton. As helpfully explained in this email from Chris, provided to the internet by an anonymous indie developer, five portraits of US Treasury Secretary Alexander Hamilton get you a completely unbiased, in-depth review of your game, of between 500 and 1,000 words. Indie Game Magazine will also throw in two tweets from their Twitter account. And for an extra $50, Indie Game Magazine will also give you a 15 minute YouTube video review. Firstly, I can knock out a thousand words like ain't no thang. The script for my last episode of Pixel Burn clocked in at about, ooh, 2,235 words. Secondly, unbiased? Christ, if I'm going to pay you to shill for me, then the least you can do is be a fucking shill. Especially if you throw around sentences like Contact me about how we can work together and get your game the promotion it deserves. I'd have used the term coverage myself, since it implies a neutral mindset and attitude going into the review, and also doesn't stink so much of PR it makes me want to vomit my face through a wall. If you're too skint to pay even the initial $50 entry fee, Indie Game Magazine will accept some labour in exchange for a review. In other words, you do a bit of work for them and they give you a review. Failing that, they can still give you a 250 word preview for your game and chuck in a mention of where readers can find it. Whether you pay for a review or plump for a free preview, however, you still have to provide them with a promo code. Needless to say, the reaction from the indie developer community was a teeny tiny bit hostile, with recognisable indie names like Mike Battelle, creator of Thomas Was Alone, expressing their disgust and outrage. Mike even went so far as to request Indie Game Magazine take down their review of Thomas Was Alone, 
lest anyone who reads it in the future assume he paid for it. In response, Chris Newton wrote over 1400 words defending his new policy, citing his desire to actually pay his reviewers for their time. Which sounds noble, or at least it would if he hadn't pointed to numerous scummy mobile app review sites that also charge for reviews as evidence as to why he's right. Which is a bit like saying you're perfectly justified in killing 17 men and making an altar out of their skulls because Jeffrey Dahmer did it. It's even more disingenuous when Indie Game Magazine still has this article by a now nameless former staff member outlining in succinct detail why paying for reviews is scummy and awful. The concept of paying for a review is not a new one, but any legitimate mainstream gaming site with even a shred of dignity will never directly accept cash for reviews. Paid for reviews are mostly found on mobile app review sites which have no qualms whatsoever about charging developers a fee for what they call an expedited review. Like Indie Game Magazine, they justify it by saying that the fee is for the service of a review itself and does not necessarily guarantee a positive review. However, I refer to my previous statement that if I'm going to pay you to shill for me, then I expect you to be a fucking shill. A comprehensive yet thankfully small list of such sites can be found on appynation.com. Needless to say, I trust any of the sites on this list about as far as I can throw my own cock. Publishers will also sometimes hire freelance journalists to write a mock review for a game that's still in development. While these reviews are indeed directly paid for, however, they're never intended to see the light of day on any legitimate gaming news site or magazine. They're used internally to give publishers an idea of the kind of review a game might get out in the wild. Any game you ever looked forward to that got cancelled because of an internal review was likely killed by one of these. And you'll never know who swung the sword. Now, I'm in no way whatsoever opposed to indie game magazine's writers getting better pay out of this. I'm not a monster. I don't get some sort of perverse kick out of imagining starving games journalists subsisting entirely on crackers and tins of tins of cold beans all pale and gaunt fingers warm to mm, bloody stumps rubbing deep heat all all over there emaciated bodies and strapping themselves to a radiator. <laughs> Sorry, I... miles away there. In the long run, however, this policy can only do more harm than good. Firstly, it reflects badly on current indie game magazine contributors. Despite claims from the editor-in-chief Tom Christensen that reviewers don't know which games were sponsored, his words not mine, it would be pretty bloody obvious to anyone with half a brain. If you get asked to write a full 500 to 1000 word review, then you can assume it was bought and paid for. If you're asked to also make a video for it, then it was doubly paid for. Meanwhile, former contributors to Indie Game Magazine will probably want to remove any mention of it from their CVs and LinkedIn profiles. Even then, they're still now tainted by this to some extent. It doesn't matter how many noble intentions and pretty words Chris Newton dresses this policy up in, it still looks shady as all buggery. Finally, this policy also negatively affects developers who have their games reviewed in Indie Game Magazine from now on. Any game that gets even a single letter over 250 words is immediately branded with the mark of fucking Kane, since the implication will be they paid for their review. And who would want to give money to an indie developer who clearly has cash to burn on paying for reviews? They might have paid in labour, so to speak, but how's a reader supposed to know that? Whatever you may think of the state of games journalism, any gaming site worth even a fraction of a damn would never be so gauche as to charge for reviews. A site lives or dies by the respect and trust of its readers, and anything that jeopardises that jeopardises the future of the site itself. Hence why popular theories about gaming sites engaging all sorts of underhanded shadiness, you know, being bribed for higher review scores is, quite frankly, just that, conspiracy theories. Any gaming site that did weird, shady, unhand stuff like that would be practically blowing off its own kneecaps with a shotgun and then rubbing feces in the wound. That's all for this episode of Pixel Burn. At the very least, I hope you found it tolerable. If you liked it, then please do let me know either by leaving a comment below or dropping me a message if you're so inclined. If you didn't like it, however, then, well, thank you at least for watching this far. You can go now. <laughs>